you immediately go and speak to Cortland Henry, correct? Yes, sir. And we listened to the tape of Mr. Henry. Yes, sir. Who told you that there were three people in his car, correct? Yes, sir. Cortland Henry? The driver, correct? Yes. Christopher Ant, well, let me get in the right order. In the front passenger seat was Anthony Williams. Yes. And sitting in the rear passenger seat was Christopher Thomas. Yes. Only those three people when the shooting occurred, correct? Correct. You learned that he lied to you about where the drive-by shooting was, correct? Yes. You went to, what, three different areas to look for evidence of the drive-by of Cortland, what Cortland Henry told you, correct? Yes. You learned at that time that at first he was labeled a victim, but that he now is lying to the police concerning the shooting of two individuals. He, he was still listed as a victim that day. Even though we knew he was lying to us, but he was still considered a victim at that point. There is such a crime as lying to the police, correct? Yes, sir, it's a misdemeanor. You could have arrested him if he so chose for lying to the police, correct? You're saying I should have arrested a, a potential victim of a violent crime on a misdemeanor? Uh, Could you just answer my question? Could you have arrested him, yes or no? Yes. And you spoke to him for approximately an hour or two, correct? It was about an hour. Okay. And he gave you the address where he lives, correct? Yes, sir. And that address was 18521 Southwest 44th Street, Silver Lakes? Yes, sir. No, no. Uh, Sunset Lakes. Sunset Lakes. But he gave you the home address? Yes. And he tells you also that Melly lives there, correct? Yes. He tells you Anthony Williams, the one of the victims, lives there. Yes. He tells you Christopher Thomas, the other victim, lives there, correct? Correct. And he also tells you that Melly is a recording artist, correct? Yes. And we learned from the testimony that $16 million went into Jameson Francois' bank account. Over a 30 month period, yes. Okay. So, and he was the business manager of this 19-year-old young man. Yes. You learned later, correct? Yes. A rather successful, would you say, recording artist. I, I really don't understand the music business, sir. I don't know how the money's made, how it comes in. I'm not asking you that. Someone who earns $16 million in 30 months legally is pretty successful, wouldn't you say? Well, I don't, like I said before, that we could never determine the amount of money, what was, you know, because Mr. Francois had other clients, so we could never isolate what specifically is made by one artist over another. Okay. We just knew the money was there. So, you knew that the two victims, the driver of the car that lied to you, and Nellie lived, and you had the address at the same house. Yes. 
you also learned about that time, and you mentioned it briefly, that a, a text message came out from a crucial almighty. Yes. And that text message was, we were just aiming at YMW. Correct? Yes, sir. And it had a picture of him with a target. Correct? Yes, sir. So it would be fair to say on October 26th of 18, Crucial Almighty, which his real name was David Hedgepath, was suspect number one based upon that. It was a person of interest, it was something to look at. When did you since you knew this on October 26th of 2018, when did you decide to talk to the David Hedge, Hedge, Hedge crucial almighty, who said he shot at this young man inside a Jeep? What date? The... I first did a search warrant into his social media account where the comments came from, which then uh, being able to determine uh, a better picture of Mr. Mr. Hedgepath was, so it was probably maybe two years later when we interviewed Mr. Hedgepath. Two years later? That would be in 20? Yes, sir. A year after this young man surrenders to you, to the police? I'm not sure the exact date. But February of 19. Okay. Would you agree it was two years after that? Yes, sir. Do you uh, subpoena any records from him? Uh, his, his work records. And when do you subpoena those work records? About two years later, after we interviewed him. Okay, and I think you introduced him this. Did you speak to any of his co-employees to verify whether or not he was really working when the time clock indicated he was. Yes, sir. No. You also learned from Cortland Henry 
that they were having a problem with a guy named Benton. Yes, sir. I'm going to label him as suspect number two. Who is Benton? You never could identify him. <clears throat> so last name unknown. Correct. You also learned that there was a problem at Walmart where they got jumped and a, I think a necklace or a bracelet was stolen. A little uh, pendant uh, fell off one of them, yes. Okay. Did you go to Walmart to investigate that? No, sir. I'm going to make him suspect number three so far. Okay. And I'm going to just label him Walmart with a question mark. Fair enough? Fair enough. Did you bother to go and attempt to pull the surveillance of Walmart because they keep their page for a while? Not a while, sir, but usually about 30 days. Did you go to Walmart to attempt to see if it didn't exist? No, sir. <coughs> now, you then, during October 26, get the surveillance tape of the people coming out of the recording studio, correct? On which date, sir? The 26th. Yes, sir. You respond to the hospital in the morning. Yes, sir. By mid-afternoon, you get the surveillance tape, correct? Yes, sir. You identify, do you not, by the end of October 26, all eight people that have that left the recording studio? I think we had more like the 27, 31 was pretty much identified. Okay. By October 27, you identified Cortland Henry. Correct. Yes, sir. Anthony Williams. Yes, sir. Christopher Thomas. Yes, sir. Uh, Trevon Glass. Yes, sir. Uh, Melly. Yes, sir. I'm missing three. Jacoby Mills. And Jacoby Mills. Octavius Withers. Octavius Withers. And, and Adrian, Adrian Davis. Davis. All eight people that left the recording studio and two uh, had passed away, correct? Yes, sir. And you knew where all three, all eight of them were living, correct? Yes, sir. And that was at the 18720, whatever that address I read off before. The, the, the Sunset Lakes, 184 Southwest 44th Street. You had that address, correct? Yes, sir. And you had observed the bloody scene of inside the Jeep, correct? Correct. And you knew that Cortland Henry had lied to you. Correct. So, you certainly, at that point, obtained a search warrant to look at that house to see if you could find any blood, any gun, or anything to tie up what happened in that car, correct? There is no way we could have got a search warrant for that house because there was no nexus to the crime to the house. And I have to establish a nexus between the two where the judges will not sign the warrant. Did you even try, sir, to get a search warrant and go in front of a judge and say, I got eight people who left the studio 
They all live in the same house. The driver of the vehicle we interviewed lied, and the inside of the Jeep is covered in blood, and we're looking for the gun or guns and the bloody clothes involved in this. Did you bother to do that, sir? Sir, like I said before, there was no connection between the house and the and the, the crime itself. Now, the we, answer where, where we had where we had blood, where we had evidence, where we had uh, instruments of a crime, we did search warrants. Anytime we had a nexus between the two, we did a search warrant. We never had a nexus between the two. We even went to that, that house that day, knocked on the door, there was no one there. You could have secured that house by officers standing in front of it and at, at least come to this jury and say, I went to a judge, explain to the judge, eight people live in a house, eight people left the studio, and a few hours later, two people ended up dead, and the driver of the vehicle lied to us about everything concerning the shooting. You could have done that, could you? No, that's not how that works, sir. Not how it works. Fair enough. Did you get a search warrant of the house in November? At all? You mean for which house, sir? The, the house where Millie lived. No, sir. How about December? They were already gone at that point. You could have looked for blood, traces of blood, because we saw that you sprayed this agent on things and miraculously blood surfaces. You know that. Yes, sir. Did you do that? No, sir. Hmm. You mentioned to the state that you spoke to an Adrian Davis and a Dontavious Withers, correct? Yes, sir. They were the two of the individuals that originally left the studio. Yes, sir. And got into the Red Mitsubishi. Correct. 